They've been an inaugural part of human culture for millennia. People have told countless stories of winged, fire-breathing, monstrous reptiles that lay waste to anything in their path and strike fear into the hearts of any being who dare come across them. These creatures are often referred to as behemoths of myth and merely a work of fiction. But little did they know that on a small island in the middle of the Indonesian archipelago, these reptiles of mythical proportion walk among us. Here, there be dragons. <laughs> Hello all, welcome back to Zoological Point. My name is Kyle, and before we begin this episode of Species Spotlight on the legendary King of Komodo, allow me to apologize for not uploading anything for the past month and a half. I don't really have any excuse for that, I've just been kind of lazy and preoccupied with exploring national parks. Also, super fast, super important announcement. I stream on Twitch now. That's right. Me, Kyle, the socially awkward animal guy. So if you're a fan of animals, video games, or listening to me ramble on for 15 minutes about why I don't like ostriches, check it out. It's at twitch.tv slash zoological point Kyle. Anywho, let's get on with the video. First things first. Unfortunately, they do not breathe fire despite their name. I know, I know. I'm as disappointed as you are. While they aren't exactly dragons, they're pretty much the closest thing we've got. Varanus komodiensis isn't only the world's largest monitor lizard, but also the world's largest lizard. Well, ever since Megalania, and through some miracle of god they're no longer roaming around, imagine you're just driving around in the middle of the Australian outback and this overgrown gecko the size of one and a half Volkswagens armed with jaws like a bear trap just meanders out of the brush and makes you their lunch. While Komodos may not be as large as their Australian ancestors, they're anything but tiny. The average female dragon can reach over 7.5 feet long and weigh over 150 pounds, whereas males can grow to about 8.5 and, and weigh over 200. The largest Komodo dragon on record was an absolute colossus. This individual was 10.3 feet long and weighed over 360 pounds. Admittedly, since the dragon had recently eaten, the weight may have been increased due to that. To be honest, it's kind of rude on the scientist's point. Imagine if doctors weighed you after you ate an entire wild boar. Well, that's probably something only Komodos can relate to, but I digress. Scientists used to believe that the secret weapon was highly potent saliva, but that has since been disproven. We now know that their primary armament is a venomous bite. These toxins have a wide variety of functions, including, but not limited to, blood clots, hypothermia induction, and muscle paralysis. Long story short, try not to get bitten by a Komodo dragon. It's safe to say that Komodo dragons live in a man's world, as for every female monitor, there are about four males. This definitely makes things interesting during the mating season, which lasts from late spring to early autumn. To impress the ladies, male dragons fight while standing on their hind legs. Before they partake in the duel of the dragons, they try to make themselves lighter to allow for easier stabilization during fighting. How did they do this, you may ask? Well, of course, the clear option, by defecating and or vomiting. Lovely! After one of the male dragons emerges victorious, the winner determines whether or not the female is ready to mate. By using his tongue? No, 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 no. Not like that. Not like that. Similar to their closest relative, snakes, lizards use their tongue to smell, so they smell to see if she's ready to mate. Have you ever wondered why some squamatates have forked tongues? It's a specialized adaptation that allows them to determine which direction a scent is coming from. Speaking of mating, this is how they do it. So when the And that's how babies are made. Sometimes a man. Hey, did you know that? Hey, this fact isn't too sexual, even for an animal that makes the Kama Sutra look like we fit yoga. When a female cannot find a mate, she can mate with herself. Well, not really, but also kinda. Parthenogenesis is a type of asexual reproduction in which an organism basically clones themselves and then gives birth to a younger version of themselves. Pretty cool, huh? There are entire species that rely on this method to survive. For example, there are some geckos that are found on islands throughout the Pacific Ocean that are entirely female, meaning they have an entire species that are just clones of one individual. Take that, Camino. I know this sounds very Jurassic Parky, but as we've learned on the channel before, sometimes fact is stranger than fiction. That'll about do it for this episode of Species Spotlight. Hopefully you've learned something new about the world's largest lizard. If you liked the video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. Also, speaking of free, check out our streams on 
twitch.tv slash zoologicalpointkyle. We've got multiple awesome projects in the work and we can't wait to show you what they are. We'll see you soon.